is the Emergency Medical Minute. All right, so we'll, we'll come up with a uh, kind of a hypothetical patient scenario, and then we'll all vote on it. So we have a patient who comes in with diffuse flushing, swollen lips, itching all over, abdominal cramping, and just an hour ago he was eating uh, at the Bonefish Grill, and he had, let's see, he had panko and pistachio-encrusted salmon, with uh let's see a shrimp cocktail before that and uh and then he had some key lime pie for dessert so what is our diagnosis for this patient so we're we're gonna give it we're gonna give you options so a anaphylaxis anybody vote for anaphylaxis no yeah sure everybody's gonna vote more than once aren't you uh b ciguatera toxin anybody vote for that one it wasn't puffer fish. No, no puffer fish. It was a panko and pistachio encrusted salmon. Uh, C, yeah, let, let's see. C, terrible gluten intolerance. No, not that one. D, scombroid. Uh, nobody votes for that one. Uh, e, I uh, didn't come up with E. All right, anyway, so this patient has, uh, oh, and how are we going to treat him? So any, is there any suggestions for treatment? So who votes for uh, Benadryl, IV Benadryl? Anybody? Yeah? Who votes for Epi? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Everybody wants everything? Uh, Cymetidine? No? No? Uh, what about uh, Solumedrol? No? All right. So this patient has scombroid, and I see by your blank faces, nobody's really remembering what that is. So it kind of mimics uh, an anaphylactic reaction, and it's unique to certain types of fish. So it's basically a certain form of food poisoning that's associated with dark fish. So it would be like tuna, salmon, mackerel, things like that. And it's when the fish is improperly stored anywhere along the chain from the fisherman to the bonefish grill. If at any time the temperature went above 40 degrees, there's a risk of scombroid. Basically, there are enzymes present in the gut bacteria of the fish. So like the E. coli that's present in the fish gut can interact with um, histidine on the surface of the fish and convert it to histamine. And then you have this terrible reaction called scombroid. So... Uh, the symptoms we kind of already described, it's, uh, you know, it's usually flushing, there may be lip swelling, there's a lot of itching, there's diarrhea, and there are gut symptoms with abdominal cramping. And it's treated with only antihistamines. You don't need epi, you don't need um, any steroids associated with it. Uh, interestingly, the fish doesn't necessarily look or smell bad. You can't tell any difference in the fragrance at all, so it's not like rotten fish. In fact, it usually doesn't smell rotten. And uh, it can be either fresh fish, canned, or smoked fish. So even kind of cooking it or smoking it or even freezing it won't uh, alter the reaction that you're going to have uh, when, you take, when you have the fish. So that's it. And the reason I thought of that is because I was just in the Caribbean, although I did not have scombroid and I did not have any of those types of fish. I had different fish. How do you tell the difference between the reactions? So, sure. So you might not know. I mean, it's usually based on history. Uh, it would usually be a history of recent fish ingestion. So the onset is in the last 10 to 90 minutes uh, is usually when they get it. And then the other would be if others are ill that had the same dish. But you can't, you can't always tell. So it's, pro it's, not, it's probably not going to harm them to give epi and solubendrol as well. Uh, but it's, if you know for sure that uh, it's scombroid, then you don't need to give steroids and what's that it could have been right it could have been the gluten it could have been the pistachio allergy you just don't know yeah probably the gluten all right that's when you it. have the leftovers is tartar sauce prote protective because <laughs> i don't waste leftovers right tartar sauce is not protective <laughs> emergency medical minute is and always will be about free medical education Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.